Hey, what's up, guys? Ralph, Ralph's Automotive. On the lift right here, I got me a 2012, <coughs> excuse me, this is a Chevrolet. Let me see if we can see this. Yeah, you guessed it correctly. It is a cruise. <coughs> and I figured, excuse me, I figured I'd bring you all along on a quick inspection. This is going to be new customer, a new regular customer. So I'm going to bring you all along for the inspection. I'm going to point some things out, see if we can find anything wrong with the car. And if so, give the customer a report what she needs to fix. All right, so let's continue. I ain't got a lot of time. <clears throat> Man, I got some dust in here that I'm not liking. Um, so anyway, guys, I'm going to make this short. Now, I'm going to check it later on because I got the phone in my hand here, and I can't do all of it. I'm holding the light. Got the phone in my hand. So what we're looking for is some of the ball joints. And we're going to look at the brakes. We're going to look at uh, steering, bushings, like I said. We're going to look at exhaust. Okay, we've got some exhaust here. See if I can show you this. That's kind of falling apart. It's not broken yet, but it is falling apart. We're going to look for some leaks, which this car here definitely got leaks. We're going to see some more of it here. This, I'm going to assume, is related to engine oil, not transmission fluid. Yeah, here we can see. <clears throat> Excuse me. Man, I got some dust in here that I'm not liking. But anyway, continues on. Continue on. We're going to look at some motor mounts, like right here. Same on the other side. Ball joints, bushing. We're going to press on the shocks a little bit. Going to continue on inspect our exhaust kind of give that a visual make sure nothing is cracked broken anything like that the ends the joints hangers on the exhaust make sure that all of that looks good okay that's great we're going to inspect the uh the leaf spray uh, not the leaf springs the coil springs for cracks breakage then we're going to do the linkage bushings and also wheel bearing back here, <clears throat> shocks to see whether, whether, how the shocks look, you know, if they are uh, nice and clean, make sure the shocks don't have uh, oil leaks where they blowed, make sure our uh, wheel cylinders don't have no leaks, because this car here obviously does not have uh, uh, disc brakes, it's got drum brakes, uh, easy way to tell is looking right at what we're looking at right here, that's the wheel cylinder right there. At least the back side of it with the bleeders that uh, somebody lost the caps off of. Yep, that one is off too. Dumb thing to do. But anyway, not renting. Look at some of the electrical connections underneath the here. And the point of this, this here is going to be that uh, when you take the car in and have them do an inspection, make, do, make sure they uh, check all that stuff and that'll give you uh hopefully this will help you decide what all you're going to ask them when when they say well yeah we did an inspection it all looked good so now you actually got something that you can ask you know look at your oil pan and all that good stuff uh those are things that you can ask so i'm going to put this uh, camera up on a tripod and we'll go around and we're going to tuck on some of the wheels and all that good stuff. I have to lower it back down, of course. And then we're going to get the pry bar and do a little bit of frying as well. So, so as advertised, what I'm going to do is take my uh, suspension-proof pry bar here. And uh, yes, that was a joke. And we'll pull a little bit on the bushings. We're going to do that on both sides, of course, not just the one. Like I said, we done did a little bit of visual. So... I like that part of it here. It's okay. We'll give the wheels a spin. Make sure that our wheel bearings don't sound bad. We're going to give it a little side to side pull. And of course the same thing here. Give the wheel a little bit of a pull. Spin it. Make sure there ain't no noise. And in this case here there isn't. 
bushings are fine so that being said I want to move on toward the front here so we are ins we're going to inspect the CV axles front and back make sure there's no tears which normally they leak grease when they do have tears so that's uh, sometimes easy to spot sometimes not so good but we don't have any tears here <clears throat> and we don't have any tears on the opposite side which is over here where my hand is at I hope the camera can see that so we've already I've already rolled the wheels around I'm tucking on them a little bit Okay, so here uh, I don't know if we can show it but we're gonna try nope that's apparently not gonna happen and get the camera up a little bit more maybe 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 I'll have to bend over okay so what I did right now is I've got the camera angled at the strut up here. When you pay attention to the strut tower, I'll lift up on this wheel a little bit. So I hope the camera can see that. This whole assembly is actually pushing up. So we're going to have to do some looking around on the strut tower up there. And we've already inspected the exhaust. The exhaust looks good. Going to investigate on draining the transmission fluid out of this thing. Uh, these units right here, uh, I forget what model it is now. Uh, 4T, 4D and 45, I believe. And these are non-serviceable. You have to split the case back here in order to uh, put a, a filter kit in it. I'll spit that out here in just a minute. So, like I said, we'll have to split the case in order to do that. So, we're not going to get that carried away with it. And truth to be known, I'm not too concerned with that right, right at the moment. I want to con concentrate on getting this inspection done with. Uh, I'm, for right now, today, the uh, rear brakes is not going to get inspected. I'm just going to do the front because I don't have a whole lot of time. Uh, vehicle will be back anyway, so that's not a problem. Uh, one other thing that you want to take a close eye on is your tires, or have if somebody checks it, have them check your tires. And also, <clears throat> make sure that when you spin it, there's no humping in it. And of course, I've already did that, so I'm not going to show all that. <coughs> Man, there is some kind of dust in here. It's irritating me. Probably should get the light light out from underneath. Go down a little bit more. Ninety-five degrees outside again, so we may have to turn the big fan on. Like I said, we'll put hot cars in here, and the air conditioning just don't keep up. Careful. If you're careful enough, excuse me, you can use the impact on this. Won't hurt it. <coughs> Man. couple of them stripped. Somebody apparently tightened them up with an impact as well.
get that light over here, get the camera over here. Might as well show you. You don't have to take my word for it. Come around this side. So, somebody did brakes on here. No lube on the hardware. Nothing. Of course, as I said a hundred times, you know, this part of the country really probably doesn't matter. Be better, but they're not seized up or nothing like that. So that kind of these rotors don't look good from the back side. The other one didn't look good. So I'm gonna call it on one wheel. I'm not gonna do both. Because obviously these brakes have been done and there's nothing sticking. Since the wheel is rolling perfectly fine. Oh, come on. that up later on <clears throat> like I said I'm not gonna do the other side Well, however, uh, fire up the computer here in a little bit, see what kind of uh, updates the vehicle has. See what's going on right there. what is going on on the strut tower over here. Okay, never mind on that. Already know what it is. There's the rubber is split on the bottom side. <clears throat> No need me going any further. I ain't gonna fix that right now anyway. Uh, rubber on the bottom side, the piece that sits underneath, it's split. I'm assuming that's where my play is coming in. So, not gonna worry about that. Good habit to get into. Do a quick compression check. Oh, 
Oh, I guess I should have said that. That car has actually got uh, 140,000. I did not say that earlier. I guess that would have been a good piece of information to have. T40 if anybody wants to remove a coil pack off the car I'm going to pull one plug Visual inspection. Okay. Whew, that fella is hot. Son of a book. Uh, that right there, guys, that's an oil leak. Not bad yet, but it's starting, certainly starting up. No ifs and spots about it. I knew that when I pulled it out. And what in the did I do with my life? <laughs> wow. Ain't that something? Get that uh, El Camera in the light, in the kind of out of the. Yeah. Now, I'm going to have to find the light. We can't see that. What did you all do with my damn light? Man, y'all going to have to quit hiding my light. Cool. Do this one more time. There you go. Nice and visible, right there. None of the others have that problem. That one there, leaking. We got the. <clears throat> I don't know how good we're gonna see that. Um, the lines right there that go into the radiator. These are leaking, guys. That's that's not 
from anything else that these lines are undoubtedly leaking they go they they're all the way down they're wet soaking wet down here okay it's really bad on the other end uh, something somewhere is leaking really really bad so we may or may not address that it depends kind of kind of see the salt the salt marks on the aluminum here uh, you know a lot of times that makes you wonder if it's been in a different climate than ours because uh, normally we don't see that here you know that that is a distinct look that you can always tell that salt's been sitting on it and also here on the lines, the uh, coating actually come off of it already. Uh, as I said, those are the, the transmission cooler lines. The coating has come off, and they're actually starting to rust through on one spot. So definitely something corrosive going on. But uh, like I said, I'm here mainly to inspect. I still got to pull the plug, of course. Got the sidetrack there, but anyway, we're going to look at the fluid real quick. My uh, deck's cool over here. It's starting to smell acidy. And this is getting uh, about up there in the mileage where a coolant flush may not be that bad of an idea so I'm gonna look it into all that uh, what I generally do you know I'm gonna write a report and that report is going to be given to the customer I'm not uh, I normally don't push any kind of sales whatsoever I let uh, generally explain it to the customer let them decide what they're going to do so if they want to if they want to address it that's fine if they don't well we'll worry about it when when it fails all together my job basically is just to let the customer know and with that being said go ahead and turn the camera off and turn the camera back on uh, when I go to go to do my, my initial scan in the car and uh, look at all the modules and uh, what the uh, uh, numbers are on it so we can try to figure out if there's any updates available for any of any of the module uh, that's something the customer did want to do so we'll get that tech 2 wind fired up here in a little bit and see what we can do wide range of opinions here guys I realize that first problem with that thing is it's got NGK plugs in it. NGK? No, don't put them in the GM. I'm sorry. Opinions, 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 but no, I don't put NGKs in no Chevrolet. Uh, fine wire, good plugs. Not not knocking the plugs, but uh, just really don't. I don't do that. Uh, this is the one that has the leak. I showed you that. That's going to make for a hot plug it's got a little build up on a spark plug and the way these uh, whoopsie the way these plugs are designed you can't really brush on them is that that wire tip it will uh, just break bend or whatever it is it does but uh, Anyway, not a good idea to, to start cleaning around on those. Just thought I'd share that as well. I right, did a little bit of a dummy move. Shouldn't have put the wheel back on because I'm changing the transmission fluid. Uh, there is a plug. Yep. I'm pointing right at it there, right beside the CV axle. Uh, what I did is I took the plug out of the side first. And the reason I did that is I started pre-draining into my pen over here. 
on, on these particular cars, I've always tried to, uh, I, well, let me, let me back up. The drain plug is right here. They're 11 millimeter, okay? And it's the same on the side there. That's the, uh, the check plug, actually. And I generally drain the fluid out of these, not directly into my drain pan, because I want to kind of gauge what I am taking out of it. You don't have to do that. You can follow procedure on how to check it. Uh, it should be just fine. Not saying you have to do that. It is a general habit of mine to to do that because I'm gonna log that information. It all gets written down. And that's the reason, mainly the reason I do it, because I do write everything down, and that's something that's going to get put in the in my information system. And uh, speaking of information system, I actually have a software that I have been building over the years. For auto shops, it's got uh, customer information, vehicles, work orders, uh, all that good stuff. If any of you guys that have a one-man shop or whatever and you don't need bookkeeping along with it and just want to know some basic information, uh, give me a holler. I'm going to sell a little bit of that to, uh, to put toward further development. It's a software that is not cloud-based. It's going to be installed on the computer. I don't do cloud because I don't want the internet to go down and me not be able to, to use it. So let me know if anybody's interested in that software. We'll work something out on the price. It's not going to be no uh, $20 software now. If you, you know, if that's what you're looking for, uh, you're looking in the wrong place. This is worth a lot of money, uh, but. Uh, I'm willing to make anybody a good deal just so get a couple of copies sold, maybe, hopefully, uh, so I can continue on developing more options, more features. So, let me know. Let me know in the comments. But anyway, moving on down here is my drain plug. I'm going to transfer this, what I got here already, I'm going to transfer that over. I can already tell you, the fluid in this thing is absolutely nasty. There was actually a concern, drivability concern, the way the Transmission acts sometimes, at least that's what I've been told. And uh, looking at the fluid here, I know the camera is probably not going to pick it up, so I'm not even going to try to show it. It's pretty black. This transmission here uh, takes a Dextron 6. And we are going to replace it with the uh, AC Delco fluid already got eight quarts like I said we're not going to drain this into the drain pan we are going to catch it separate because uh, I do want to know how much is actually coming up here kind of give me a baseline as I have no history on this vehicle
Maybe the camera will see it. I don't know with the light shining on it. I mean, it's not black, black, but it's definitely got a brown tint to it. I don't, I, I don't know if we can see it or not, but it surely ain't red. Kind of looks like it's got a little, or quite a bit of clutch in it. Clutch material, I should say. Or friction plate material. Didn't think about it earlier. I did decide because I really didn't want to overflow it. But really, if I'd have thought about it, I could have done this just as easy. I said that a while ago, but uh, the actual filter is in between. You have to split the transmission to get it. So it's essentially non-serviceable. It really is pretty nasty, but like I said, I'm gonna, I'm gonna have a hard time for the camera to pick that up, so just take my word for it. Of course, when you change the transmission fluid, it never looks the way it went in. It goes without saying, and that's not what I'm trying to insinuate. You know, it's gonna look used, <laughs> obviously. I guess more or less my point here would have been that uh, I don't think that fluid here has ever been changed. Probably should have. Been changed like three or four times already in my opinion, but whatever. Not going to argue with an engineer. Kind of like some of these, uh, some of these transmission, you know, that uh, the manufacturer claims they're filled for life or whatever, what not have you. You know, uh, if you if you fall for that, whatever, you know, that transmission fluid is not that expensive. Yeah, it's not cheap. It's not cheap to do that service, but uh, when you replace that transmission, the transmission fluid all of a sudden seems real cheap. So I would think that we have about what we're going to get here. So what I what I just did, I put it in my transfer pump right there, and it's got, uh, of course, it's got gauges gauge on it. So now I know how many quarts has actually came out of it. It's kind of hard to see, so I'm not even going to try to show you. Well, I know it's really hard to see for me, so let's get that up here in the light. I told you guys it's hard to see I've done found the liters so we got a little bit over four liters which is close to a quart but anyway
Well, anyway, that's it doesn't really matter. I've got four and a half liters, we're gonna call it. And uh, that's actually my starting point as well, as I said. Sorry, I don't mean to babble, I'm kind of a little bit tired anyway. Um, that's my starting point. Uh, we're going to put four and a half quarts of fluid back in. And then uh, we'll get the hose put on it, start that thing up, let it warm up. And uh, take the plug out of the side with the transmission in park, I think it is. And uh, of course idling. And we'll let it, of course the vehicle has to be somewhat level. And uh, we'll go ahead and um, check the fluid level, make sure it's correct. And on top of the transmission, it's got a fill slash vent plug. Got a little bit of fluid left in here. Not a biggie. Contents over here. I always take and clean my uh, a little transfer container here. My little mighty back. I always clean it out so we don't cross contaminate. But uh, you don't have to get really picky with it. You know, if you had a little bit of something, a, a different transmission fluid in there, and there's a couple of uh, uh, drops in there, you know. Guys, come on now, that, that ain't a problem, you know. If you're talking uh, a half a quart, you know, that's a different story. We can't do that, but like a couple of uh, drops of something else, that ain't going to hurt it. I rinse this out with brake cleaner, you know, uh, dump it, rinse it out with brake cleaner, and we want to call it a day. No problem at all, but like I said, we use the transfer pump all the time, so there's your part number. That's the AC Delco Dexron VI at a 10-9394. That's what's going to go back in. This is full synthetic transmission fluid. Part numbers have changed three times already. This is the latest revision. I'll go ahead and pause that camera for a minute so it don't get so long. So, yeah, I just made a mistake. I shouldn't have left that light down there. It kind of blinded everything. Uh, over here, Okay, sorry about that. Right there, that black cap right down there, that's the uh, part where we're going to fill. Get you in perspective. This is where I'm at. It's really easy to get to. I mean, a little long, long uh, funnel would have been just as easy, really, I guess. Sometimes they are, sometimes they're not so easy. Doesn't matter. I'm going to use that filler that, that we got here. Uh, we're going to use it anyway, so. These little deweys, that mighty whack that I got here, them things are really handy. I like them. Almost no mess. 
and uh, it switches from or you can switch them from a suction to an actually being pressurized so basically you can suck fluid and you can fill fluid both at, both with the same unit I've also got another one that I've converted to a uh, basically a, a, a power vacuum I think I've had that in several of my videos use that quite often too when I really don't want to pump but this to me here that's you know no trouble to get the fluid in there and just easy give it a couple of pumps and we'll have it filled back up Counting a little bit of spillage, I put just uh, a little bit more fluid in it than what what was in it in the first place. Like I said, adding for spillage and all that good stuff. So I put about five quarts in. I suspect that is going to be close. We'll see here in a minute. So really in all reality it was that easy. That took no time. You know to do to do this job. All in all, pretty nice car. The only problem with it is came from an auction. Okay guys, I'm having a hard time getting that transmission warmed up over here in the shop, but I'm just going to tell you the long and the short of it, ouchie. Um, that back there is your uh, check plug, and what it amounts to is they want you to have the transmission temperature, uh, transmission fluid temperature anywhere from 185 to 203, I believe it is, and... Uh, if you don't have it there, you know, they say it overfills it, underfills it, whatever. It's kind of same thing for all. But anyway, um, so basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to assemble this. I'm going to go take a little drive, uh, see if we can warm it up a little bit better. I've had it idling for quite some time, and it's really not coming up the way it should. And we're going to have to have the transmission in park to check it. But here goes on the procedure. Of course, you take the plug out, the transmission in park, at the proper operating temperature, you take that plug out. And if it has a steady stream, let it stream. Don't get nervous. Let it get down to like a, a, a heavy drip. Now, when it goes to a heavy drip, put the plug back in, you're done. Make sure your, uh, your vehicle is level. You know, somewhat, I mean, we're not talking exact science here, but we, we don't want to overfill it because that that damages uh, components, you know, that can cause foaming and all that good stuff, but I'm not going to get into that. Anyway, that is the procedure. Right there is the plug. That's what you want to check. Uh, I'll post the procedures. I will post that in the, in the video. So you guys can see it. But anyway, thanks for watching. I'm going to turn her off here and get this done. Getting late on me. I got to go. Thanks for watching. Subscribe, like, whatever.